guys welcome back to another video if you don't know me my name is chance and welcome to my youtube channel local boy finance where we talk about personal finance stock investing and money saving tips and in this video we're going to be talking about basically if you're new to trading options you're going to want to watch this video i'm going to go kind of into the basics of what an option is and just really hitting all the bullets about trading options basically uh, now this video is going to be more of a basic understanding of it um, we're going to go over terms and then also we'll go into some examples of, you know, what op like what option trades I've done in the past and also just giving you a broader sense and understanding of what an option is basically. But <clears throat> if that sounds cool to you, watch all the way, watch the whole entire video just to give you a sense of what it is and if it's right for you in your investing strategy as a whole. But in, in my humble opinion, I think as, a, as an option trader, for a couple of years now, I think it's uh, one of the most beneficial things I've been doing, um, especially short term. But if that sounds cool to you, if you guys can do me a huge favor, is like the video. It helps with the YouTube algorithm getting this channel noticed. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers, so I'm super stoked and I'm happy. Um, I really appreciate it. I think we're at 990 right now. So um, also smash that like button, that really helps. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel um, for more videos, you know, in cryptocurrency, you know, money. Uh, stocks and, and whatnot so again uh, this is a beginner's video so if you're a little bit more advanced or if you want to watch this just to review on you know options and whatnot feel free and again um, it's I'm wearing a tank top it's super hot in Hawaii right now it's a beautiful day outside I was at the uh, the beach all day so um, other than that we're gonna just gonna jump right into it okay and I forgot to mention one more thing um, there is my affiliate links as well Again, we have Voyager, one of the best, or I want to say Robinhood, Robinhood of cryptocurrency platforms out there. Um, besides Coinbase, right? I think Coinbase is great too. However, obviously they don't work in Hawaii and I live here in Hawaii. And Voyager, I've been using it for the past four months now. It's been great. Um, I really appreciate it. Use my affiliate link. You get $25 free Bitcoin once you deposit $100 of um, you know funds into your account. And you get $25. Um, dollars free bitcoin and i do as well so thank you for supporting the channel also check out my patreon page i do have a couple patreons on there that i've been posting on um, pretty much weekly basis of the trades i've been making on options and any stocks i've been buying um, i do have i do make weekly option trades depending on how the stock market is here and there and i do post other things on there just to give you more of an insight of what i've been doing behind the scenes because i don't necessarily post everything on social media and whatnot and then lastly Weeble if you use my affiliate link as well you get four free stocks so here we go that's pretty much it I appreciate it also okay we're gonna jump right into it so <clears throat> first and foremost I'm gonna put uh, basically I made kind of like a PowerPoint style of the terms that we're gonna go over and I'm gonna be you know putting it in front of you as a screen and also I'm just gonna be talking in the background for the majority of the time of it and then um, basically we're going to jump into some hypotheticals that I've kind of came up with examples of what options and the types of options there, there is out there. And mainly I deal with uh, maybe four of them. I don't really get into the, the whole technical advanced of options like straddles and all that kind of stuff because that's way above what I my understanding is. I mean, I do understand it, but it's a little bit more um, tedious and I rather stick to simple and keep it my investing strategy simple. First and foremost, um, before we, I'm gonna put this in front of you on your screen right now. Um, before we jump into it, and you can read it as well and I'll be reading it off of um, the chart for you as well, just to get an understanding and give examples. Um, so options is a type of strategy I've been implementing in my portfolio, uh, specifically in my Roth IRA. Um, just some key basis for that is the fact that your Roth IRA is after-tax dollars. Therefore, whatever earnings you create or make from that, um, Uncle Sam or the government will never be able to tax it because it's used from after-tax dollars. Now, um, where you can, this is essentially where I like to trade my options in um, and, and do majority of my shorter short-term gains and, and stuff like that. And that's mainly what options is for. Obviously, as your account gets bigger, you can also do um, more trades. Therefore, you can make more money passively on a weekly basis or monthly basis on whatnot, on what you want to um, do and whatever your strategy is. But 
my main goal for options is for to make short-term gains in my Roth IRA basically. I do trade periodically inside of my um, individual account, but again, that is um, so, uh, going to be taxed for that you know tax period tax period year anyway. So I try to stay away from that. However, I do do it once in a while if the premium is worth it, and that, it, yeah, we'll get into that later. But this is just for a basic video. So essentially, what is an option? An option is a right to a call or sell, which is a put, a stock of a hundred shares for a specified price which is the strike price within a specified period of time, which is the expiration date. Now, um, again, buy is meaning call, put is meaning sell. Um, whenever we deal with options, we'll deal with 100 shares of the spec or whatever stock you're dealing with. Um, obviously, there's a strike price where it's pretty much like a threshold in a sense. And then also a um, specified period of time um, of the expiration date so a contract usually lasts or you can do it weekly or you can do it 30 days depending on or you can do it longer it depends on what type of expiration date you choose okay and getting into it what is a call option an option contract that gives the holder the right to buy the stock at a specified price for a fixed period of time right so if <clears throat> if I am if I'm gonna go buy a contract right that's what I'm gonna do I think the stock is gonna go up I am bullish on the stock therefore I'm gonna buy a call contract right which is an open contract thinking that the stock is gonna go up at a specific strike price okay so what is a put option an option contract that gives the holder the right to sell the stock at a specified price for a fixed amount of time same thing okay but it's just down Right? When the market is going down, you want to possibly buy a put. There you go. You're betting that the stock price is going to be or the stock is going to be bearish. Therefore, you would create gains as leverage for that. Okay. Now <clears throat> we're going to move into strike price. What is a strike price? Uh, stated price per share for which the stock may be purchased, called or buy or sold, buy or which is a call or sold as a put. So meaning there's always a stock price, right? Let's just say um, uh, TTCF, like Tattooed Chef, is trading right now at $16.70. Okay, that's the share price. Now, I wanted to buy a call option, which I think the stock is going to go up in the long term. Okay, um, so I would buy a strike price of $17, right? Because it's above the strike, it's above the share price. So that's pretty much what it, what it means. It's it's called it, the sh strike price is basically a threshold, depending on which way you're betting the market is going to go up, either up as a call or down as a put. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about basically in the money, at the money, and out of the money. Okay. And what that is, it, it can be a little bit confusing, um, especially if you look at um, the puts and calls together. So let's just break it down in just the call section. So what we're looking at is basically setting a strike price, right? Which we talked about as a threshold as um, like for a call option, let's just say. Um, so same analogy, we'll use the TTCF analogy that we just talked about. So let's just say the stock, the share price of the stock is trading at $16.50, okay? And let's just say um, the strike price that we we do is at $17. So we can say that if we buy that call option, that strike, that um, call option is out of the money currently, right? Because the share price is at $16.50. Um, the strike price that we bought at that's, is at $17. If that price, if that stock uh, contract goes to expiration and it goes, um, you know, to expiration, it's basically out of the money. Okay. Now, what at the money is is when the share price, which was sixteen fifty, right, goes to seventeen dollars, which is the strike price, and if that expires at um, whatever expiration date, that is at the money because we're breaking even. Okay, and then lastly, um, for in the money, if the share price goes above, right, 
the $17 strike price, which let's just say it's $18, basically the that contract would be in the money. So let's just say uh, we, we bought the same contract, $17 strike price. Um, let's just say TTCF went up to $18. Um, and at expiration, you would basically be one dollar in the money. Basically, that's what it's what's called, and it's the same thing as a put, but just opposite. Okay, so you just switch in the money and out the money, and that's basically what it is. And I'll just I'll leave this here as well um, in front of you, just to give you guys an idea, uh, something visual to take a look at as well, if it's a little bit more confused. Next, we're going to be talking about exercise, and what that is is um, to implement the right under which the holder of the option is entitled to buy or sell a stock. So let's just say I bought a call option. Uh, so I bought to open a call option and I have the right to exercise that contract whenever I feel like before the expiration date. Let's just say, um, same analogy, six, uh, we, get, we bought that call option uh, for TTCF at um, $17 strike price and uh, the share price at sixteen fifty, and let's just say I bought the contract for maybe about two weeks, which is the expiration date, and that's a hundred shares, right? Basically. So what I would do, uh, let's just say the next day or two days ago, uh, two days from now, the stock price shoots up to like thirty dollars per share. Okay, so I'm way in the money, which is amazing because. I'm predicting that the stock is going to go up and I think it's going to be, it's bullish, in which it did. So I made some massive gains there. And if I feel like I want to exercise that call option, I have the right to do so by selling to close that contract, right? So you can do that. And that's what exercise is. You have the right, if you own the option, since you're the buyer, you can have the right to close the option, let's just say, to capture those gains. Okay, so that's what exercise means. Uh, expiration date, uh, date on which an option and the right to exercise to cease to exist. So basically what I said, uh, I think of it as like a carton of milk, right? Um, there's always an expiration date. Uh, that's pretty much how good the milk will be till that date. Same thing with this option contract, right? You have specific dates. You can go week date, weekly or you can go monthly or you can go a whole year. But it really depends on um, the length, right, of the contract, uh, the the length of the contract basically and basically when you get into other contracts or other options we'll get into it in other videos from now that i'm trying to create is um, the longer the time expiration that you put on a contract right um, the more inclined that the stock might get into that strike price that you put way out out of the money or whatever it is um, so the premium will be better and we'll get into uh, logistics about that later but just to give you an idea or just the concept of it right okay moving on to debit and credit um, debit obviously is no good I rather you want to have credit um, that's gonna go into um, premium right we're gonna be talking about that in other videos as well but we'll just briefly touch upon that here in this in this basic video and pretty much that's what I do and that's what I've been doing for a while is I am an option trader for premium and premium is just basically cash going into your broker account okay so again premium uh, just for more of a little bit more of a definition for you guys is the price of an option contract determined in a competitive marketplace that the buyer of the option pays to the option writer seller for the contract so obviously if we're looking at um, buying calls and buying puts there's always going to be a seller on the other end selling you or writing you that contract right so like i said premium is great especially when you're the seller okay um, i'm not too fond of being a buyer of the con of the contracts and we can go into details about that because there's way too much risk involved and i'd rather be in, uh, make money um, and not in a risky way so but there is sometimes where it's good to be a little bit risky but again just to give you an idea now we're going to move on to the next slide now, what is the difference? Okay, so like I said before, when you're buying a contract, right, you're buying to open the contract. So, um, like I said, buying to open a contract, if you're buying to open a call, which you want the, you, you're bullish on the stock, which you want the stock to go up. And if you're buying a put, right, you're buying a contract and you're, you're predicting that the stock is going to go down. 
Now, with that being said, there's always a seller on the other end, um, which is basically sell to open, but that's uh, for covered calls and cash secured puts, which is another video and we'll go over that as well. But mainly, these are the two type of functions here. So if you buy a call or you buy a put um, and you want to close it, you can you have to sell it back, sell, sell to close it's called. So that's why I have it here. And then also, uh, the opposite of that if you're if you're writing a contract right uh, like a covered call or a cash secured put you have to buy to close it okay because you're selling the contract to the buyer which is the buyer you if you're buying it right you keep the contract and obviously if i'm the seller and let's just say i'm losing money and i want to close out then i obviously have to buy the contract back from you to close it okay if that makes sense so types of calls and put options main there are mainly four that i like to play with um well, actually, the mainly three, if anything, at best, um, which buying a call, like we talked about, buying a put, right? You want the stock to go down and then selling a covered call. And we can touch upon that later. It's basically use it, utilizing, like I said, 100 shares of your stock that you own outright in your portfolio and selling a contract against it for premium and basically selling a cash secured put, which is similar to that where you don't own a hundred shares of the stock. However, you're making a contract, you're writing a contract promising a buyer that, yeah, I'll buy a hundred shares of this stock if the stock price gets to, you know, let's just say, let's just give another example of the TTCF again. Um, like just say, uh, it's trading, stock price is trading at 1650. And I wanna do a selling a cash secured put. So I would sell, um, I would, sell the contract at $15. So if the, op the if the stock price ever gets to $15 on expiration date, I would have to buy 100 shares at $15 per share, which is 100 shares. And roughly that would be $1,500 in collateral that would be held in my account. So that's a whole different ball game and we'll get into that later. Um, there's a bid and ask price, okay? So when you're, you're looking at options to buy a call option or buy a put option, there's always a bid to ask price and basically there's a market price and then there's a limit price. You always want to be utilizing limit because obviously if you're a seller of the contract, you want more money. And if you're the buyer of the contract, you want less money to be spent. So therefore there's always a middle ground, which is limit. Okay. Uh, and another important one is implied volatility, a measurement of fluctuation in the market price of the stocks. Now this is very crucial to understand um, just because the more volatile, again, the more volatile a stock is, meaning um, the fluctuations between um, from one share price to another share price, right? Uh, a lot of these high growth stocks do that, do that, and they shoot up and they can crash quickly. Okay, and, and they're not like Coca Cola. They're not like these blue, big blue chip stocks where they're pretty slow growing and they don't move much right their price scale stays within like three points right but if you have like something like tesla for example they move like two hundred dollars up and two hundred dollars down depending on how the market is feeling and whatnot so that's what volatility is it's a fluctuation between the share price okay and what that plays into is the fact that when you're selling for premium or whatnot right um, or if you're buying just a simple call option let's just say um, for an expiration date, a longer expiration date, you would receive, um, it would be more likely or increase your chances of basically getting your strike price met at expiration because the volatility of the stock um, can possibly do that. And that's gonna play into some other things as well down the road when we talk about cash secured puts and covered calls because you can receive more premium that way, but it's more risky in a sense because you can obviously, you're more inclined to either buy those shares as a cash secured put or sell your shares as a covered call. So but we'll get into that later in other videos. But why options again, like I covered before, it helps protect equity positions against decline in the market. Obviously, if you uh, own shares in a stock and you you see the market tanking maybe you want to buy a put option okay um, take advantage of rising prices without actually buying a stock again this is another strategy as well if let's just say a stock is too expensive you look at apple for example and you know the stock is going to go up 
maybe you're thinking about considering buying a call because you want a, a call for Apple stock because obviously Apple is trading at you know $130 per share you don't want to own a hundred shares so therefore maybe you just buy uh, a call option for Apple I meaning if Apple goes up and you're bullish on Apple you'll make money that way as well uh, participate in the market and still leave your money free to invest elsewhere now again options have time limits or expiration dates therefore you don't necessarily need all your money in that option contract for a long period of time unlike stocks right when you're buying a stock you're committed um, regardless if the market goes up regardless if the market goes down however options you can put your money into this contract and whatnot and for a specific amount of time maybe a week and you can make money that way so you're not held to um, and then also you can sell out of the, the contract if you want to so you have complete control um, of that um, increase investment income and that's pretty, pretty much what I do I sell I like to sell premium or receive premium um, from selling contracts which is great uh, leverage your investments obviously um, if you haven't seen GME uh, GameStop and um, basically that was people leveraging their investments like crazy right buying like possibly 400 call options at an outrageous strike price and actually uh, GameStop exploding meeting that and exceeding that way in the money and actually made them um, hundreds of thousands of dollars right because they you have unlimited amount you could possibly make in call options but however you can lose all your stuff so that's that's the risk involved with it uh, like I said before what type of accounts you should have for this is basically a Roth IRA or any uh, after-tax um, accounts just because you're gonna make money um, in these earnings and also you don't want to be hit with outrageous taxes because you're doing these type of short-term trades right so that's another plus there so now we're gonna be jumping into after you got kind of a basis of it and I hope this kind of understand help you guys understand like a broad sense of what I'm talking about now we're gonna put all these points and terms together and I'm gonna run through some examples for you guys just to give you a better understanding of what's um, you know a call option and a put option and I'm gonna go through the all the terms here and so the first thing we're gonna be taking a look at and if you're getting into new into options and you're thinking about possibly buying one and you're kind of scared and hesitant to do so I highly recommend using um, options uh, calculator um, options options profit calculator .com. they're super simple to use um, pretty much user-friendly you just click on um, the whatever your strategy you're doing like a long call option and we'll go over it now as well and you can type in you know whatever stock you're looking into the strike price and expiration date and you can kind of calculate okay this is what I'm looking at how much risk am I involved here and, and all that good stuff so it, it definitely helps in making decisions on whether or not you're possibly thinking about buying a call option or just options in general this example in front of you is me buying a long call option and this is a cool strategy to use just because you have um, time on your side right um, the longer the call option obviously the more expensive you're gonna be paying for the option however I've done thorough research on this stock and I know that this stock is definitely has huge potential in um, pretty much getting up there in the share price and I've, I've done a tremendous amount of research on this stock so I'm really excited uh, I like that the stock is trading super low um, today which was like at $16 which which I think is crazy so uh, obviously I bought more and then also I bought a call option so this is actually a trade I did but um, like I said before I like to use option cal profit calculator prior to it um, just to see you know what what am I looking at here um, for risk so uh, obviously the, ta the symbol is TTCF tattooed chef um, the stock price was at seventeen dollars uh, so I selected basically um, kind of an out of the money uh, strike price so I selected uh, twenty two fifty twenty two dollars and fifty cents strike price um, obviously my bid and ask I went in the middle for a four hundred dollars and five cents right there you can see in front of you and um, one contract okay and I hit calculate now what this shows is basically um, your profit and losses in a nutshell if the stock were to trade sideways right so we can see that um, the if let's just say it's trading at $17 currently and 
from two years from now, if the stock price still trades sideways for two years, obviously I would have lost $405. However, as you can see where the green and green and red meet, there's that white area that's kind of up there and like a small incline. And then also the higher up you go, obviously I'll be making some gains. But this is just to give you an idea, right? So like I said, um, the strike price, which was $17 that I chose. The contract length was January 20, 2023, right? From two years from now, which is the expiration date. Um, uh, I bought one contract. I paid $405 for this contract. And then um, you can see on this chart, let's just say um, this month it shoots up to $30, which is highly un unlikely right now. <laughs> but if it did, I would make $1,100 off the bat just from this contract right um, as you can see the farther out you go uh, slowly it dips into your um, I guess your your earnings right just the way the the incline is that's because it's time right whenever you buy an option um, like buy a call or buy a put you're against time here so that's why you since I've done thorough research in this stock right I think this stock is going to do way better than $30 in the future and but right it, there's always that that slight risk of time you're you're um, going against time right just because <clears throat> time is what is essentially given the amount that you bought and when that time gets closer and closer to it and the stock price doesn't meet where that threshold is you'll have this um, slope there which pretty much entails that you lose your money okay and also if you're looking at it from a seller standpoint right it's actually a good thing so the person that sold me this um, contract is taking a bet that okay this guy is gonna buy this uh, contract however time is on the sellers hands okay always just because um, there's only a certain amount of time that is given for a, a, sh a stock price to go up because I bought a call option and that's pretty part of part of the risk here, right? Is um, you're making you're placing a bet, saying that this stock is going to go above a certain your strike price and well beyond um, uh, up in the uh, in the money, right? And uh, the seller is saying, nah, no way. So that's why they sell the contract. And this is kind of basically what it is. Um, and you can do this by yourself, especially on here. It's super beneficial. You can see how much you'll be making, how much you'll be up, right? And um, yeah, this is this is a great tool for you to use just to give you a little bit more confidence in actually making that type of trade. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll be we'll do a long put, and we'll let's just say we'll do the same thing. Uh, we'll do uh, TTCF, which is at seventeen dollars, and we're gonna buy a put contract. So as you see here, the puts are going to be the right side, calls are going to be on the left side. And I think that the stock price is going to be, let's just say, $10 um, per share. Oh, $10. The stock price is going to be $10 by, um, oh, I forgot that expiration. So 2023. So we'll say the stock price is going to be $10 by January 20th, 2023, which I highly doubt. But as you can see, it's completely the opposite, right? You can see that if the stock, let's just say tomorrow, tanks down to $9, God, hopefully it doesn't do that. But um, obviously, if I bought a put option here, I would be making some moolah, right? I'll be up 41% here. Um, however, if, same thing, if the stock traded sideways, I would have lost all my money there. But again, it's highly unlikely this would happen but just to give you a flip side reference of what buying a put option is here um, as you can see same thing it's a just a curve but it's opposite right there's a, there's a weird slight curve and it just ramps up quickly right until you're losing money so like i said again time is not in your favor whenever you're buying a call option time is in your favor when you're selling stuff or selling options okay so this just gives you an idea right and also, since this is highly unlikely, 
you can tell that the price I paid compared to the, ball, the call and the put is quite different here. The call I was paying $400, which was highly more likely to happen because it's a high growth stock. However, you can see that the total cost for buying a put uh, way out of the money was $220. So I was, it's going to be cheaper if you're going to be more risky in that sense. But I wouldn't recommend that because it's your, your risk to reward ratio is not worth it. So now we're going to get into, so you, we kind of understood the basis of options here um, as a beginner, right? Uh, with all the terms involved and then we got into um, testing these and trying to understand what it is right uh, we utilize options profit calculator just to give you a visual aspect of what we're looking at um, in these terms right so now we're going to be taking a look and diving into um, i think we're going to use robin hood i think it's the best tool for you guys just to get your heads around how to create or buy a contract and the procedure to do so and I think Robinhood is the best bet here Paid them um, but obviously like I said this is just hypotheticals and uh, just to give you an understanding so we're gonna scroll into some of the options that I look at and and whatnot so we'll look at BNGO right here in front of you obviously it's gonna be on your screen so um, first things first is trading at five dollars and twenty nine cents. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, um, we're gonna trade, trade options. Okay, now it's gonna bring you to this page. I think it's gonna go up, which is buying a call option, right? If you think it's gonna go down, it's buying a put option, and that's mainly the two I deal with, um, and I'm, what I'm teaching you guys right now, anyway. And then we'll get into the other two later. Um, obviously, there's expiration dates on the top of here. So let's just say we'll do May 21st, which is about a month from now. Um, and I want to buy, make sure it's on a buy, call option. Okay. So as you can see right here, the share price currently is $5.29. Okay. I'm buying a call option. So I think that the stock is going to be bullish in by May 21st. So the... Um, the strike price that I'm going to choose is let's just say six dollars because I think because the share price is at five twenty nine, I'm bullish on this stock and I think the strike price is I think the strike price of six dollars is good and I want obviously it's a little bit out of the money but since I'm bullish on this stock I think this share price will go beyond six dollars therefore making this call option in the money okay so. Obviously, if you look at on the side here, it says 0.46, and what does that mean? So 0.46, which is 46 cents, is um, the amount to buy this contract, right? Like I said before, option contracts deal with 100 shares. So if you were to buy this contract, let's just say I click it and I want to do one, obviously it's going to be 100 shares for uh, BNGO, right? And 100 times... 0.46 is $46. So it's going to be $46 to buy this call contract at uh, a $6 strike price. And my expiration date is at May 21st. Okay. Obviously I'm not going to do that right now because I don't, I don't have money in my, um, on my account, my Robinhood account, but this is just a hypothetical, right? Um, and vice versa, let's just say I want to buy a put contract and I think the stock is going to be bearish and I think the stock is going to go beyond $5.29. So let's just say I want to buy a $5 put option. So I'm thinking the stock, the share price here at $5.29 is going to go below $5. So I'm going to go buy a $5, which is the strike price put contract. Okay, sorry for that. I'm going to click it. Obviously, the price per um, per share is 55 cents. So, as one contract, obviously, it's going to be worth $55 if I wanted to buy a put contract, right? Because I think the stock is going to be bearish. If that makes does that make sense, right? So, again, share price, which is 59, $55.29. Depending on what your strategy you're trying to implement here, you can buy a call or you can buy a put. If I think the stock is going to be going up, right, 
it's 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 a call option if you think the stock is going to go down it's a put option right now obviously the more time you add to it let's just say november obviously if i want to buy a call option again at six dollars and again it's trading at five dollars and 29 cents and you see the difference in the premium here it's a dollar and 51 cents meaning if I wanted to buy this, it would be cost me $151, right, to buy this contract. But like I said, the more time you put on the contract, the more money it's going to be costing you to buy the contract. That's why I like to sell contracts because I'm the one receiving that, that money. Okay, so now that's pretty much in a nutshell how it works, right? This is BNGO. Like again, um, now let me show you how this can be more lucrative, right? But again it's going to be kind of risky because like i said when you get into stocks that are much larger um let's find one here let's look at square okay trade options and let's just say we'll give i want to buy a call in square okay so square is trading at 200 dollars uh, 245 dollars and 34 cents currently right now because it's aftermarket right now so i want to buy a call option because i think square is bullish and so i want to buy um pretty much one that's close to the share price which is 247 dollars and 50 cents call look at the premium on that 400 um four dollars and 53 cents per share so 100 shares it'll come out to 453 or 55 53 dollars for this contract if I wanted to buy it, right? And again, if I'm, not, I'm I like to be on the seller on that end, so I'm receiving $455, okay? And vice versa, if I wanted to buy a put, obviously if, if I think the stock is gonna be bearish um, for till April 23rd, which is the contract length, um, again, I would, re I would have to spend $500.70 to buy that put contract, okay? So you see how um, this can be quite lucrative if you're guessing correctly or you're making an assumption that the stock is going to go up or down. Now, um, later on in the next other couple of videos that I'm going to be putting out as well, we're going to be talking about cash secured puts and covered calls where instead of, you know, paying $715 to buy this contract, I'm going to be receiving it, okay? that makes sense you're gonna be receiving seven hundred fifteen dollars which is way better than buying a contract hey guys so there you have it the basics of options trading in a nutshell you got all the terms you got some examples here um, utilizing offers uh, options profit calculator and then also you can see on Robinhood how simple it is um, just to get into a position if you want to you're buying a call or buying a put um, on my next a couple of the videos that I'm going to be producing within the next week or two is going to be about cash secured puts and cash, I mean covered calls and cash secured puts. And we're going to be talking about rather than buying, we're going to be receiving premium, which is the best thing. It's like Christmas. Um, it's like frosting on top of your stocks that you already own. So it's like one of the best things. And that's the strategies I've been using. Super easy, super quick, simple. And really, once you get it down pat, it's like the best short term money generator ever. Um, it's like pretty much passive income in a sense. You just wake up Monday morning, you do the options trading, you get the premium, and then you just wait out your contracts, right? So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this really helps you guys. Um, I appreciate you guys so much, and I want to give back to you guys, and hopefully this will help you guys understand what options are and help maybe you implement it in your own investing strategy, which would be awesome, and make those gains. But Again, if, the, if this video gave you a huge, huge information um, booster and helps you so much, please like the video. It helps with the YouTube background. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel for more content. But then, my name is Chance. You guys have a great day. And aloha. Catch you guys on the next one. The grass is the greenest. I figured out where it's green. I think I finally figured out where the grass is the greenest. I think a guy got me speechless.